Hello, everyone. Welcome to join me in learning about distribution line inspection. In the actual distribution operation and maintenance work, we power workers are often tired of line repair or on the way to repair. Customers also complain a lot. The work is very passive due to robbing instead of maintenance. Why is this so? Mainly because we usually do not do a good job. Line inspection and maintenance work. Then why should we do a good line inspection? Because the distribution line inspection can prevent problems before they occur. It's an important work of distribution line workers. Through inspection, we can find out in time defects and threats to line safety, grasp the operating condition of the line and environmental conditions along the line, provide reliable basis for line maintenance, and provide reliable basis. Is to reduce line chipping, enhance customer satisfaction with the effective means. Distribution line inspection is randomly walk around and look at it. Distribution line inspection process, and what are the risk points? Let's learn together with me. In this lesson, I will mainly introduce to you. Classification of distribution line inspection, inspection cycle, inspection process, inspection item and requirements, as well as in the inspection process. What are the dangers and pre-control measure? First of all, let's learn classification and cycle of distribution line inspection. Distribution line inspection is generally divided into the following five categories. The first type of regular inspection. Regular inspection is also called normal inspection by full-time inspectors, according to the specified petrol cycle petrol line, mainly check the line components operation. There is no abnormal damage phenomena. Grasp the line and the situation along the line, and publicize the work to the public. Type two: special inspection. Special inspection is mainly in the holiday weather, sudden change, e.g., conductor ice and wind. And other special weather conditions and river flooding, natural disasters such as forest fires, line overloads, and when special conditions occur, special inspection. It is not necessary to inspect the entire line, only special sections of special line for special sections of the line. In order to find abnormal phenomena and take appropriate measures, type three night patrol. Night patrol is to utilize the night, especially sensitive to the characteristics of spark observation, targeted inspection of wire contacts, and the nodes of each component have no heat insulators due to dirt. Or cracks and discharge phenomena. Type four, fault patrol. Fault patrol is to identify the cause of a line fault, find the fault point, to facilitate timely treatment and restore power transmission. Type five, monitoring patrol. Supervisory inspection is also called checking inspection. It is carried out by the person in charge of each unit and the technician. The purpose is not only to understand the situation along the line, can also be on the work of full-time inspectors, inspection and supervision. 
Inspection patrols can be carried out on the entire line. It can also be a random inspection of a part of the line. Next, we will study the inspection cycle. Regular inspection cycle. Once a month for urban MV line, suburban and rural median voltage lines at least once a quarter, low voltage lines at least once a quarter. Special inspection cycle, according to the conditions of the unit, generally in wind, hail, snow, and other natural weather changes. In the case of large. Night patrol cycle, generally scattered at the time of annual peak low, one to ten kV at least once a year. But the new line should be carried out once at the beginning of commissioning. Fourth patrol cycle, after the occurrence of a chipping or grounding fault. According to the instruction of dispatching or production leaders in charge, periodicity of monitoring inspection. According to the situation of the unit, for important lines and accident-prone line, at least once a year. Next, let's see what are the requirements for inspection. Inspection work should be. Personnel with experience in power line work, individual inspectors, should pass the examination and approved by the production leader in charge of the work area. Cable tunnel remote maintenance area, and night patrol should be carried out by two people. When patrolling alone, climbing poles and towers is prohibited. Windy weather patrol. You should go along the windy ward side of the line to avoid contact with downed conductors. Accident patrol should always consider the line energized. Maintain a safe distance. The inspector finds conductors broken on the ground or hanging in the air. Try to prevent. Pedestrian from approaching within eight meters of the location of the broken wire, in order to avoid step voltage injury, and quickly report to the dispatching and the superior, waiting for treatment. Night patrol should be carried out along the outside of the line, and carry enough lighting tool. Special patrol should pay attention to the selection of routes, prevent flooding, and landslide and other injury to people. Next, we learn the second part of the inspection process. Distribution line inspection generally contains six steps. The first is to check the technical data of the inspection line. Make sure you have a good idea of what's going on. The second step, according to the natural conditions of the inspection line, prepare the necessary tools for inspection. The third step is to convene a pre-shift meeting, explain the scope of inspection, inspection contents, realize the responsibility of division of labor. Step four. Do a good job analyzing the danger points and take careful control measures. Step five: Check the name of the line after going to the inspection lot and the scope of inspection. Against each item, patrol in place. After the final inspection, defects should be categorized and registered. What are the items to be inspected on distribution lines, and what are the requirements? We need to inspect the following item: check whether the tower is tilted, whether there is corrosion at roots, whether the foundation lacks soil, frozen drum phenomena, whether the tower has been hit by a car, 
possibility of flooding. Whether there are cracks in concrete posts, cement peeling off, and steel reinforcement exposed, etc. Whether the tower components are bent, deformation, corrosion, and loss loose bolts in each part. Whether the welds are open or incomplete welding corrosion. Is the number plate or warning sign complete and obvious? Are there any weeds and climber around the pole tower, bird nest, etc.? Conductor check each phase of the wire arc, prolapse, balance. Whether there is too loose or too tight, whether the distance to the ground is in accordance with the regulation. Whether there are broken strands, corrosion, burns, etc., overheating and oxidization of joints, binding line has no loose disconnection phenomena. Conductor neighboring parallel crossing distance, whether to comply with the regulation. Whether there are sun dries hanging on the conductor. Etc. Whether the iron crossbar is corroded, deformation, loose or serious screw, porcelain cross arm have no dirt, damage, crack, flash over loose, or seriously screwed. Pulling line, pulling line has no slack. Broken strand, rust phenomena. Whether the pulling wire fitting are complete, whether there is corrosion deformation, reliable connection, horizontal cable to ground distance, is in accordance with the regulations. Is there any obstruction to traffic, or easily hit by car and other dangers? Is there any seals for the pulling wire? Tie rods and coil buried dams. Comply with the regulations. Is there any uplift? Whether the foundation lacks soil, fittings, and insulators. Whether the metal tool are corroded or not. Whether the deformation fixing is reliable. Cutter pins are corroded and broken. Is there? A complete set of stripped gaskets. Are the bolts strong? Insulators have no dirt damage, cracks or flash over phenomena. Insulators have no screw phenomena. Iron feet have no corrosion, loose deformation. Marking tower number hanging or brush writing is standardized. Whether to comply with the provision of the regulations, warning sign are complete and standardized. Whether it conforms to the regulations, whether the sign is fixed reliably, etc. Along the line within the protection zone, is there any stacks of firewood, grass, wood, flammable and explosive material, and other sun dries? Whether there is any civil construction in the protection zone, etc., hazards to the operation of the line, trees in the vicinity of the line, buildings and other conductor spacing distance, whether it's complying with the regulations, pull tower along rivers and ditches, whether there. It's a danger of being washed by water, and falling diagonally, etc. Defects should be categorized at the end of the inspection and register the defects. Defects are divided into three categories: emergency defects, major defects, and general defects. Emergency defects must be removed immediately or take necessary safety measure. As soon as possible within 24 hours, major defects can be removed within a week. Intensified inspection before elimination. General defects can be included in 
annual, quarterly, and monthly maintenance program, or eliminated during routine maintenance. Let's see what are the danger points during inspection and how to do a good job of pre-control measures. The main danger points are dog bites and bee sting, traffic drowning, falls and electrocution. We target these dangers. We must take appropriate precautions to ensure personal safety. For example, fall prevention measures, wear work shoes, slippery road or cross the ditch, prevent falls when climbing, take precautions against falling from height. Students, in this lesson, we have mainly introduced distribution line inspection classification, inspection cycle, inspection requirements, inspection program, and the inspection process, etc. Summarize in 12 words. Know the process to know the project. Understand the requirement to ensure safety. We must memorize them by heart. Finally, students will complete three practice questions after class to consolidate what they have learned. That's all for this lesson. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.